Mechanical engineering is arguably one of the broadest disciplines in existence. Cars, airplanes, rockets, and submarines are just 1% of the things mechanical engineers design. We even make magical things that cause humanity to devolve into our earliest ancestors. So if you're thinking about getting into mechanical engineering, you might be wondering exactly how hard it is and if getting a degree in it is worth your time, effort, and hard earned money. After all, the timeless phrase, it's not rocket science, sort of puts things into perspective as to how hard mechanical engineering can be, but let's see how accurate this idiom actually is. Now, whenever I tell someone I'm an engineer, the response I get most is, you must be a math whiz or you must be really smart. So in this video, I'll talk about the hardest parts of mechanical engineering and why it's not as hard as people make it seem. The engineering curriculum is notorious for the amount of math in it. And this is why many people have the perception that engineering is exceptionally hard. Almost every engineering class that I took, including solid and fluid mechanics, circuits, material science, thermodynamics, heat transfer, vibrations, mechanics of materials, electromechanical design, and even physics involved a good amount of calculus and differential equations, which are needed to solve problems and do well in these classes. This is why advanced math courses are prerequisites for engineering classes. Now you might think you are bad at math or physics because other students are doing way better than you on exams or grasp the concepts much faster than you. However, this doesn't mean that they're smarter or better than you. They might've just had a better teacher in high school or simply studied more. I say this because I personally struggled quite a bit in the first half of Calculus 2 class and scored below the class average on the first midterm. I literally felt that everyone understood sequences, series, and the methods of integration way better than I did. What I didn't know at the time was that math in university, particularly statistics, calculus, linear algebra, and differential equations equations has a steep learning curve and requires lots of practice and hard work up front before you start to see results. You might have practiced and are currently here when in actuality you just needed to put in 10% more effort to see a drastic improvement in your understanding of the material. Now I know some students might be smarter than others and might not have to do as much practice but at the end of the day practice does make perfect, especially when it comes to math. Once I started practicing more, my grades improved exponentially and I ended up scoring in the 95th percentile on the final exam. My grades for physics and engineering classes also saw a huge improvement because of all the practice I did. So if you're struggling with the mean value theorem in calculus or having trouble understanding projectile motion in physics, all you need to do is simply practice more. I found out that doing practice problems from a textbook, while useful, can be very tedious. So instead, I use this very fun, affordable, and easy method to master these concepts instead. Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video, is the best way to interactively learn math and science. It offers thousands of fun, hands-on lessons from basic to advanced topics. And what's even better is new lessons are added every month. It doesn't matter if you're learning from scratch or looking to build upon previous knowledge. Brilliant custom customizes content to fit your needs and gives you the option to learn at your own pace on your phone, tablet, or computer. Now I've taken all the math courses on Brilliant and they were all game changing for me. The bite-sized lessons and guided learning paths help me to not only focus on the important concepts, but also retain the information way more effectively than lectures so that I could excel in my classes. One of my favorites is their calculus in a nutshell course, where you explore how derivatives and integrals are used in engineering and how to actually put them to use to solve real world problems from optimizing the shooting angle of a soccer player to determining the volume and surface area of complex objects like an aircraft wing. Try out everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days using my link brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild listed in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Aside from the math, the mechanical engineering curriculum is rigorous and it's likely you'll find the classes to be moderately to extremely challenging the first two years. But that's totally okay and normal. There is an adjustment period that you need to go through as you start to get used to the fast-paced teaching 
style and learning the wide range of engineering theory taught. This will include classes like mechanics of materials where you learn about the different modes of loading as well as stress and strain in beams and shafts, fluid mechanics that teaches how fluids behave at rest and in motion, using Archimedes principle as well as the Bernoulli's and Navier-Stokes equations, heat transfer that teaches how energy is transferred in an object or system via conduction, convection, or radiation, and manufacturing processes that talks about the methods used to convert raw materials into parts that mechanical engineers design, such as CNC machining, plastic injection molding, sheet metal forming, and 3D printing. These are just some of the courses that you have to take as a mechanical engineering student. To give you a clear idea of what to expect, here are all of the courses that I had to take during the four years at my university. If at any point you feel that a class is too difficult or that you aren't smart enough for engineering, just remember one thing. The majority of students probably feel the same way as you do, so you shouldn't be discouraged. Of course, there will always be exams that make you want to cry because half of the questions tripped you up, but you later realize that other students couldn't answer them either and that the professor curved everyone's grades up for selfish reasons. So there's really no need to stress out if you didn't do as well as you wanted to on your first midterm. You can and will excel in all of your classes as long as you do enough practice and put in the work. Now, as a mechanical engineering student, knowing which topics to focus on for all of your classes can be a huge challenge. To help you guys out, I summarized all my notes that I took in university and created a detailed one-page cheat sheet for all of the core mechanical engineering classes to help you prepare for your next exam or interview. Link in the description below for any of you who are interested. Mechanical engineering isn't just about theoretical knowledge. It's about applying that knowledge to real-world problems. Don't worry because this is actually the more exciting aspect of mechanical engineering and is easier to learn than a theory. Once you step foot into the real world as a mechanical engineer, you will design, test, build, and optimize products composed of hundreds if not thousands of parts and sub-assemblies such as an aircraft landing gear or iPhone camera that need to meet stringent technical specifications and deadlines. To prepare you for industry, most university engineering programs will require you to apply the engineering theory that you gain in class and develop hands-on experience by doing labs and design projects and encourage you to do internships and co-ops. For example, I took a course called Instrumentation and Theory of Experiments where we had to design and set up an experiment using a wind tunnel, pressure transducers, load cells, and data acquisition equipment to collect data with LabVIEW. We then analyzed this data and applied our knowledge of fluid mechanics to calculate the experimental and theoretical drag coefficient and Reynolds number for three spheres of varying surface roughness and wrote a 50-page lab report. You will also likely have to complete a senior capstone or design project with a team. This class will teach you many practical skills and how to solve design and manufacturing challenges typically encountered in the real world. You will learn to use computer-aided design or CAD software to model and design parts in 3D and 2D to create prototypes and computer-aided engineering or CAE software to analyze these parts to ensure they are mechanically sound. Then you'll produce these parts in the machine shop leveraging a variety of tools such as a bandsaw, CNC machine, 3D printer, and a drill press and assemble them together with off-the-shelf components using different fasteners. It's definitely a juggling act to keep your theoretical knowledge sharp while gaining practical experience, but anyone can do it with enough dedication and hard work. And I'll reiterate again, you don't have to be smart to study engineering. Speaking of smart, hard work and perseverance trumps intelligence any day of the week. Many studies have shown that intelligence, which has many forms, is a born trait. On the intelligence spectrum, you can either be born on either extremes or somewhere in the middle. And this is, of course, out of your control. A large portion of the population, including myself, fall somewhere in the middle. Obviously, people who fall on the lower end of the spectrum will have to dedicate more time and effort into studying to succeed. But I think that's a good thing and will teach you how to persevere through challenges and become a better problem solver. Whereas people who are naturally smart might lack the valuable qualities and skills needed to succeed in industry and life in general because everything comes easy for them, which they take for granted. You'll come across people with varying levels of intelligence and different skill sets in university, so it's important not to compare yourself with others and just focus on yourself. 
Now, law and medicine are two majors next to engineering that are viewed as extremely challenging. So let's compare the three. To become an engineer, you only need to spend four years to get a bachelor's degree and start working in industry. On the other hand, you need to spend at least seven years to become a lawyer and even more to become a doctor. While lawyers and doctors on average make more than engineers, the opportunity cost that comes with these majors is much higher than engineering. By the time a law or medical student steps foot into the real world, the engineer will have already worked three to five years in industry and will have probably been promoted to a senior engineer or manager. Keep in mind that engineering student also spent the least amount of money on tuition. So I would say getting an engineering degree yields the highest return on investment, but that's besides the point. Just do what you find most interesting. Now, in terms of difficulty, I won't say whether engineering, law, or medicine is harder because all three programs require different bodies of knowledge and skills. I would say engineering is conceptually way more difficult than the concepts you learn for medicine or law, but the volume of information you need to absorb for law and medicine is way more compared to engineering. We've already established that you don't have to be smart to study or do well in engineering, but you definitely need to quote unquote hustle and be willing to put forth the effort. It's literally just like any other thing you want to master, like playing an instrument. You need to practice your craft daily. Now, based on my experience, there's several things you should focus on to excel in your engineering classes and make it through university. First is communication and teamwork. Engineers are not known for their strong communication skills. So that's extra motivation to develop this skill. If you can't explain your work or thought process behind an idea or solution, it's going to be really hard to get your point across with others, whether it's your professors or design group teammates in school or your future boss, customers, and other engineers in industry. Working together in groups, whether it's studying for an exam or designing and building a robot in a club are all great opportunities to articulate your thoughts clearly and concisely. I also recommend taking a public speaking course and doing an internship to put yourself out there more. Engineers who communicate the most effectively tend to be the ones who are most successful in industry and are generally the ones who become managers, directors, and part of the C-suite. Second is creativity. Mechanical engineers design products from scratch and are problem solvers. You need creativity to come up with innovative ideas and solutions. Do things that promote creativity like exercising, watching movies, or learning a new instrument. One thing that I like to do to exercise my brain is to take any object around me, imagine what the internals look like, and draw different cross-section views of it. Third is problem solving. You will come across all kinds of different problems as an engineering student on homeworks, exams, labs, and projects. All of this is to help you develop an engineering mindset so that once you become an actual engineer, you are able to solve complex, ambiguous real-world problems, for example, related to the design and manufacture of more fuel-efficient jet engines. Fourth is time management. As a mechanical engineering student, managing time effectively is critical. Our schedule is jam-packed with classes that have heavy workloads, so balancing coursework, projects, and exams while having someone of a social life can be overwhelming if you don't develop a good daily routine or regimen. All of us have procrastinated at some point in university, but it's important not to let it become a habit. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Remember never to doubt yourself. And if mechanical engineering is something you're truly interested in, just go for it, even if you don't think you're good at math or physics. Just practice more and you'll succeed. Mechanical engineering is a very rewarding career. Anyways, as always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my video here where I talk about everything you should know before getting into mechanical engineering. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.